a two-lane public road with stone walls, curbs, rolling hills, thousands of spectators, and speeds reaching 200 miles per hour. The Isle of Man, an island located in the Irish Sea, right between England and Ireland. It is home to the deadliest race in the world, the Isle of Man TT. Riders from all over the world rise up to this challenge, pushing their bodies and superbikes to the absolute limit. The money for winning is modest. These riders show up just for the sport and the glory of winning. The fastest lap ever was set in June of 2023 by Peter Hickman of England, who completed the Isle of Man's 37 miles in a mind-numbing 16 minutes and 36 seconds, with an average speed of 136 miles per hour. This sheer speed and minuscule margin of error means that when these guys crash, they crash big. Some of them get lucky. Many do not. Since the first race in 1907, 267 riders have died on the aisle. The last year where no one died was 1982. Due to the nature of this race, a fast first response was difficult. There was no air ambulance in Northern Ireland. Regular ambulances were slow to respond. How could you keep up with these guys and get to them as quickly as possible when they go down at ridiculous speeds. Well, what if we put a doctor on a motorcycle? Starting in 2003 at 23 years old, Dr. John Hines joined Dr. Fred McSorley as one of two men who made up the Flying Doctors. These men would follow the race on their motorcycles, nearly reaching the speeds of the other riders while weighed down by medical equipment and massive nards. They recognized the danger of this sport and were constantly learning how to make the race safer through their experiences. They saved lives by getting to any incident within seconds. And John was especially good at it. So John, as he became, and of course at this stage he was a rising star in anesthesia and pre-hospital care. So John really was now the flying doctor and I was finding myself as the flying second opinion. This team of volunteer medics is the best in the world at dealing with trauma on the track side. Hines personally saved the lives of dozens of bikers from the brink of death. Many of them were his friends. Naturally, this team was greatly respected by the riders and the spectators alike. Hines was a teacher at heart. He held insightful panels at multiple conferences such as SMAC and was great at bringing humor into darker but necessary subjects. He campaigned for Northern Ireland to have its own air ambulance. He was a pioneer of pre-hospital care, a subject where Northern Ireland was lacking. On nights where he was on call, his call sign, Delta 7, was the first to arrive on scene where he worked quietly and efficiently to get these patients home. I'd be standing in my pajamas, barely having emptied my bladder, and somehow over the radio, Delta 7 was already in the car and on his way. I used to say to him, do you sleep in that bloody suit? On July 3rd, 2015, Dr. Hines was providing medical cover for the Scaries 100 road race where he lost control of his motorcycle and was fatally injured, passing on the next day. His behavior to his patients who were critically ill if they were at all conscious, John would establish contact with them. He'd put a hand on them. He would talk to them. He would introduce himself. He would say he would not leave them. He would be with them. So easy to forget those things. He was a revelation. And when things got really hectic, and there was a lot of shouting and screaming around, John just got quieter and quieter and he commanded attention. He always said please, he always said thank you. His crew resource management skills were exceptional. I think we could all learn a lot about that. You can command more attention sometimes by being quiet and polite. Would you mind getting this? Thank you very much. Guys, we'll just step back a bit. We're just gonna arrange that. 
Can you get that vacuum matters organized? Yep, that's great. Thank you very much. That was John. This was a man who was constantly raising standards in the medical community with an extreme passion for motorcycles and pre-hospital care. His truly selfless actions were noticed and respected. A year after his death, Northern Ireland got their air ambulance. Call sign Delta 7. For as John would say, it's the honorable thing to do.